Blackmagic Design just released the DaVinci Resolve 17 Beta. While it started as a color grading program with the addition of the Fusion Compositor and Fairlight DAW, Resolve has become a full post-production suite. The Fairlight DAW in particular is what I'm interested in, and the claim that improved processing in 17 can enable Fairlight to handle 2,000 tracks with real-time effects. It's an interesting claim, and I've decided to put it to the test. This video is brought to you by PureVPN. Join 3 million existing users and get all the benefits of a VPN, including private browsing and access to region-locked content through servers in over 140 countries. Plans start at $1.32 a month and are backed by a 31-day money-back guarantee. Get started at the link in the description. So the claim made in Blackmagic's presentation was super vague, but upon closer inspection, it appears the claim is based on the additional performance offered by the Fairlight Audio Core and Fairlight Audio Accelerator, which is several thousand dollars of hardware I don't own. So instead, we're going to compare generic performance versus several other DAWs. The system I'm testing on is running an AMD Ryzen 7 1700X, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and an RTX 2070. We're gonna pit Fairlight against Reaper version 6.19 and Cubase Pro 11. Both are fairly accessible DAWs that are popular for post-production workflows, Cubase being the little sibling of Nuendo. Notably missing is Pro Tools only because Pro Tools sucks on Windows and I don't feel like reinstalling all my plugins with the AAX version. To test this, we're using an 83-track multi-track from Cambridge Music Technologies Free Library. It is music and we're testing post-production performance, but I promise I'll try my best to make it sound as unmusical as possible. The approach here is to work in 10 track segments. We're gonna have nine tracks of audio, each with the native EQ and compressor in the DAW, and six VST plugins. The 10th track will be an aux send with two plugins, and each of the nine audio tracks prior will be sent to the aux. We'll repeat this until audio playback stops running smoothly. And hopefully along the way, we'll also get some interesting insights about how efficient each DAW's workflow is. Reaper did not last as long as I expected. Controls started to get slow and laggy at around 28 tracks, and by 36 tracks, pretty much any action I did had a noticeable wait time. By the time I got to 40 tracks, there was serious chugging and it was just about unusable. When I imported the 41st track, Reaper hung and became unresponsive. At that point, we were sitting at 98% CPU usage on all cores during playback and utilizing 4.2 gigabytes of RAM. With Cubase, things were different. We got quite a bit farther before things completely locked up, but the issues started popping up earlier. Copying plugins and settings was laggy almost immediately. At only 21 tracks, I started to experience occasional stuttering during playback. That stuttering got worse and worse as the track count grew. By 41 tracks, it was extreme, and at 59 tracks, there was a lot of heavy freezing. The stuttering became nonstop at 62 tracks, and I finally had to give up. Cubase was so overloaded by that point that it wouldn't shut down properly, and I had to force quit it. At that point, there was 70% CPU usage. We were utilizing 5.7 gigabytes of RAM, and interestingly, 5.7% of the GPU. Cubase wasn't using all CPU cores as heavily as Reaper was, and I think that was its downfall. Overall, though, Cubase was far more efficient, and reaching 62 tracks without fully utilizing the CPU was impressive. I think so far, we've clearly demonstrated that you're probably going to run into CPU bottlenecks before you take up more than 8 gigabytes of RAM. With Resolve, things get even more interesting. I was actually plagued by random, unrelated issues more than stuttering. First, Resolve doesn't allow you to resize plugins. This isn't terrible, except that all of my Dead Duck plugins opened with the interface cut off, meaning I couldn't actually use the plugins. I even tried using automation to control the plugin, but it turns out you can't control parameters externally in Resolve with automation. You also can't easily reorder tracks or plugins by clicking and dragging them, which is a feature in literally every other DAW I've ever used. To reorder plugins, you have to open up a separate menu and click up and down arrows to move the plugins around. If you want to search to find a specific plugin, you have to do it from a separate window. You can't just do it from the effect insert pop-up. You can't import a bunch of files onto separate tracks. They all import onto one lane by default. Reaper at least lets you select how to import files when you drag in multiple. Looping sections of audio requires you to use a different playback hotkey than spacebar. There is no stereo panner, even if all your tracks and master bus are in stereo. You have to utilize the 5.1 panner. 
To be fair, having a 5.1 panner built into a free program is absolutely amazing, but if you're working in stereo, it's way more annoying than it needs to be. Setting up aux channels for things like reverb sends is a little weird at first, but once I got used to it, I actually liked it quite a bit. I also liked how easy it is to copy plugin settings and parameters over to other tracks, but of course, you can't just individually drag a plugin over to another track. All that pales in comparison to the largest issue, though. Resolve does not support VST3 plugins. VST3 is the newest standard for VST plugins with a ton of new features, and by new, it came out over 12 years ago. A lot of plugins are only available in VST3 format. I also don't have all my plugins installed with both the VST and the VST3 version because why would I? And if I'm not installing AAX versions so I can compare Pro Tools, I'm definitely not doing it for Resolve. Every other DAW and audio editing program that supports VST plugins also supports VST3 plugins. For such a basic and fundamental feature to be missing is utterly unacceptable. I used Phoenix Verb on one of the aux sends for this experiment, and I had to substitute it with Resolve's built-in algorithmic reverb, which, by the way, sounds absolutely awful. Even Dverb in Pro Tools sounds better. Of course, I still haven't mentioned how Resolve performed. There was some minor stuttering at 30 tracks. By 41 tracks, playback started to get pretty fuzzy. That fuzziness got much worse at 44 tracks. I probably could have pushed Resolve a bit farther, but at that point I was frustrated and just gave up. There was several plugins I had utilized in Reaper and Cubase, but couldn't in Resolve due to aforementioned issues, and I didn't have any good substitutes. Not to mention, constantly substituting plugins would have made the comparison less and less consistent. And I really wasn't going to go back and redo all my other tests just to ensure I only use Resolve compatible plugins. By the point I gave up, we were sitting at 52% CPU usage, 5.3 gigabytes of RAM, and 11% GPU usage. So this brings us to the conclusion, which really isn't the conclusion I was anticipating. If Resolve can truly handle 2,000 tracks on a single system with EQ, dynamics, and six real-time effects on every channel, that is damn impressive. You are talking about almost $5,000 worth of hardware to accomplish that, but it is impressive nonetheless. But if you're lacking fundamental features like VST3 support, is it even worth it to invest in all that hardware? The main advantage of Resolve right now is all the features it offers at such a low cost. The full version is only $299. For comparison, New Window is $999 and Pro Tools Ultimate is $799 a year. But by the time you've invested in all of the specialized Fairlight hardware, you could have just as easily purchased Pro Tools Ultimate with an HDX hardware acceleration card, or New Window with universal audio acceleration, or a farm full of computers to do the processing. And you'd have all the features I complained were missing just a minute ago, and more. This is actually really disappointing for this channel. If you've been subscribed, you'll know I'm working on a series about surround sound and immersive audio production. Up until this point, I intended on using Resolve for the surround sound stuff because supporting 5.1 production in a free program is insane, and having full 3D support for $299 is just as crazy. This project was somewhat of a test of Fairlight for that purpose, and it got a solid D-. Now, it's a lot more compelling to bite the bullet and go for a new window straight off, but that's something I'll cover in more detail in my actual 5.1 production video. Anyway, that's it for this video. Did go a little off the rails towards the end there, but hopefully you still found it informational and interesting. And if so, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, including all of my upcoming videos on immersive audio, definitely hit that subscribe button.